All right, so this is going to be part two of your homework illustrations for chapter nine. All right, so this is problem number six, and I've already got the solution up, but let me walk you through how you get it. This is going to be an overhead budget. Remember, overhead budget will have two parts. It's going to be variable overhead and fixed overhead. They tell you right here, I went ahead and clicked this icon. Icon gives you all the direct labor right there for April, May, June. They tell you that the variable manufacturing overhead rate is $1.70 per direct labor hour, and their fixed overhead is $3,800 per month. And so down below, this is here's where they come up with it, and I like to do this in two parts. The first part is the variable. The variable is on this row. Notice all they do is they take the labor of $4.90, multiply that by $1.70. They do that for each month. So $4.90 times $1.70 would give you $8.33. You add that to the $3,800, which is the fixed part, and then you get, I'm going to circle this one, 46.33 for April. May and June work the same way. You take the labor hours times $1.70, you get 12.41, plus the fixed overhead of 3,800, you get 5,041. Very, very simple calculation. Same for June. And then for the quarter, all they do is they just add them up. So that's how you would do exercise number six. All right, so this is number seven, and I'm going to walk you through not the whole thing, but just the first part, and hopefully you can be able to figure out the rest of it. Notice the answer is already given for you, but in this problem, I click the icon. Notice on the, the data, they're giving you sales revenue for November, December, January, February, and March, and then they also give you the collection history right here. You collect 20% in the month of sale, 40% in the month after, 35% two months, and then the 5% are never collected. That 5% for us is going to be a distractor. We won't even need it. Okay, so in this problem, we want to know, it says, this is, of course, this is the part everybody's going to miss at first. So up here where they say the company sales are 40% cash and 60% credit, that means you're going to have to multiply times this sales revenue to convert the cash, set, to separate the cash sales from the, the credit sales. So I'm going to show you how to do January and then hopefully you can figure out the rest. So on January, you're trying to wonder how where'd they get these cash sales? Well, the cash sales would tell you the January sales is 15,400. So if you take that 15,400 and multiply that by 0.40, that's 40%, that's where they're going to get the 6160. All right. Now, everything else. So the 60% of 15,400, so 15,400, multiply that by 0 0.60, what that's going to represent is that's going to be your accounts receivable sales. Because remember, you have two parts. You have cash sales and you have accounts receivable sales. So again, if you take the 15,400 and multiply that by 0 0.6, that's going to give you right at, I believe it's 9240. I'll write that right there. So 9240, that's going to represent your accounts receivable. So over here, we've got the cash sales given at 6160, that's the 40%. And then how do we figure out these? So notice where we've got the 20% in the month of sale, the 40% month after, and 35% two months later. So we've got to figure out in January, what months are we looking at? So we've got January, and we have to actually look back where we're going to go back to December, and then also back to November. So January is pretty easy. So if you were just doing January's credit sales collection, you'd say January's, which was 9240, that's the credit sales, multiply that by 0 0.20, that would be the 1848. That's where they get this number. So then if I go back to December, December sales were 11,000, but I got to convert that into the credit part. So I got to multiply that by 0 0.6 and then multiply that by 0.4 because it says 40% is collected the month later, essentially. That's where they got the 2,640. And then if I go back to November, November's credit sales were 16.8. Again, I got to convert that to the credit part. So the credit sales of that were 60%. And then I'll multiply that by 0.35. And that's where they get the 35.28. So January, so 20% is collected in the month of January. The month later, which is the 40% month after, is actually December. So the 40% of December is, notice it's the credit sale. So that's why I multiplied that by 0.6. And then November, I did the same thing, 16.8 times 0.6. 
and then multiply by the respective percents to get what is collected. Again, I hope this makes sense. Follow the same pattern for both February and March. All right, this is uh, exercise eight for your chapter nine homework. This is gonna be a production budget. You'll see the solutions down here before, but again, I'm gonna walk you through how to get that solution. And so they tell you that they've got, in the first four quarters, they give you sales revenue, and they also give you jars sold. So remember on production budget, we're gonna be interested in the units part of this. We're not gonna be interested in the sales revenue because we're not doing cash collections or the income statement. We're just gonna be the units is what we're interested in. So we're really interested in this first column. You'll notice down here in the solution, they put it in a horizontal format, which is how I would do it. So here's your 152.5, 181.5, and so forth. Now the key here is we wanna know what's their inventory requirements. So over here at the top, they say Hoffman anticipates selling 223,000 jars with total sales revenue of 260 in the first quarter of the following year, given in the preceding table, which I've already shown you. It says they have a policy that any inventory, here's what, is what I'm looking for, must be 30% of the following quarter's sales. So as I go to hand, down here to do quarter one, here's your, here's your formula. Note it's unit sales plus ending equals total needs minus beginning equals what you got to produce. So the 152.5 is given, that's your sales. Notice the second quarter is 181.5. So to get this desired inventory for, for quarter one, you would take the 30%, multiply that by 181.5. Again, they're showing that right over here. 181.5 times 30% is 54.5. You add that to your sales, you get your total needs. And then you got to subtract out beginning inventory. Well, beginning inventory is going to be the 30% times 152.5. That's where they get the 45,750. You subtract that to get the 161,200. And then once you got that first quarter, you just follow the same pattern for the next quarter. So if I'm in quarter two, I got to get my desired inventory. I take 30%. Thirty percent of quarter three sales to get the sixty three nine. Add that, and then notice we already know what the fit. We already know the beginning inventory. See how I draw my arrow there? That's from the previous quarter. There's your fifty four five. You subtract that. That's how again. Again, you get your required production. You do that again for each of the quarters. Pretty simple uh, calculation. All right. So this is number nine in your homework. This is a materials budget. I went ahead and opened up the table. This gives you your required production, which is over here. And then the key in his, this problem is, says that it takes two computer chips to make a toy. That's gonna be an important number we need. They pay $4 for each chip. And then the inventory requirements, I'm just gonna pull it out, is 20% of the falling much production needs. So I'll show you how to do January's. So for notice they line up the production as your starting point, production units, 5,300, 4,100, and so forth. You got to multiply that by two. You get that from right up here, two chips for each toy. Once you do that, that gives you your quantity needed for production. That's going to be this row. You're going to add your inventory requirements. Your inventory requirements is going to be the 20% times 8,200. You get 12,240. And then the way they get this 2120, that's the beginning inventory, is you got to take the 20% times 10,006. And they show that to you right over here in the solution. That's how they got that 2120. And again, I'm going to take that. That should not be dollars. That's going to be units. So you subtract that. This row right here is what they're going to buy. The 10,120 multiplied by the price. The 40,480 is what they're going to spend. And you follow that same pattern for February and March. So when you're in February, again, the key here is you got to do the conversion first. And then once you've done that, to get the ending inventory, it's going to be 20% of the next. And then you add that to get the beginning inventory, because we already know it's 1640. You can just kind of copy that down there. You subtract that to get the 8320 times 4 is going to give you the 33280. So again, I hope this helps. It takes a little bit of practice. Just take your time with it and see if you can calculate how much they need to purchase and then what's the cost. It's a very, very simple formula. You just have to kind of read through it and organize it. The key mistake that most people make on this is they forget the opening step is they forget to multiply by that conversion number of two.